Hi everyone, this is Aurélie Najm from Glasgow reporting for RemNow, live from Copenhagen at EULA 2022. Exciting days. Um, this is uh, almost the end of the conference. And today at the late breaking abstract session, we had very exciting data that I'm going to share with you. Um, but before I do that, I'm also going to fill you in in a few posters um, that I've been seeing. So the, what I want to talk to you about today is the Cravacitinib, a, a TIC2 selective um, inhibitor that uh, has been already um, used and tried in um, psoriasis and in psoriatic arthritis. Um, and we had a few posters today that confirmed what was already um, uh, uh, suggested that obviously it's efficient in uh, PSA, but also um, in poster uh, 1039, they showed that about 20% were able to reach minimal disease activity at week 16. Um, in poster 1040, uh, which combined safety data for the phase two PSA trial and the phase three psoriasis um, randomized control trial, um, they showed that there were no specific uh, safety data, uh, safety signal compared to um, other JAXA, JAXA uh, pathway inhibitors. And uh, they also confirmed that the efficacy and safety data uh, for PSA that were um, published at week 16 are also consistent with the results found at week 52. So quite good news and reassuring information. Um, there was also this poster, uh, poster 0005, showing um, that they were actually specifically looking into um, patients that were responding to uh, the cravacitinib, and um, they looked into plasma, baseline plasma of these patients, a baseline serum, sorry, of these patients, and they did an amino assays, and they look at pre, pre, uh, predominant cytokine signatures in those who were responding and they were able to show that patients that had a IL-23 enriched signature in their serum were more likely to respond to the gravacitinib. So I think this is something to keep an eye on uh, and maybe to also uh, try and look not only at the serum level but also um, at the tissue level. Um, but the main information of today is the trial of Ducrabacitinib in the phase two randomized controlled trial in lupus. And this is the late breaking uh, abstract 004. So um, briefly, what they did in this trial, they, they had uh, above 300 patients, they compared uh, with placebo and they had three arms with three, uh, four arms in total, but three um, active arms with different dosage, three milligram uh, BID, six milligram BID and 12 milligrams QD. And the primary outcome was the SRI response at week 32. And they were able to show in this trial that um, uh, uh, there was actually an improvement, um, especially in the uh, three and six milligram um, arms compared to placebo. And um, this was sustained until week 48. They also looked at secondary outcomes, such as the improvement in tender osteology and cons that was actually significantly uh, reduced um, in the uh, three milligram BID arm at uh, week 48, but also improvement in the big leg, a higher LLDAS, and um, uh, no particular safety signal. So um, there's also another uh, late breaking abstract about Britain kinase inhibitor, uh, um, which is what LB005, that was also quite interesting. Um, so overall, Role, it seems that things are moving around in lupus as well, which is which is great, which is quite exciting, but also reassuring data of the crevacitinib uh, use in PSA. Um, this being said, I think this is my last uh, the, my last video for the last day of the Congress. It was lovely uh, to share all these uh, exciting information with you. Tune in on Ramna.com for more exciting um, presentation and data and hopefully we'll capture it next year follow me on, on twitter at aurelie romo follow rome now bye